Booker the drive, gets inside, leans in. Knocked away and stolen by Holiday. Phoenix has to foul. And a pinnacle ball throws it down. It was a huge Game 5 win for the Bucks. I mean, this series goes back to Milwaukee now. I think they close it out based on how they played at home this series and all season long and during these playoffs. But um, Especially with that Deer District, Pat. That, have you seen that? I know. Outside, outside the Pfizer Forum in Milwaukee, it is an absolute party. It is a bloodbath. It looks so fun to be at. 35,000 people. I didn't even know Milwaukee had 35,000 people. I didn't even know the Bucks had 35,000 fans. Yeah, I would not have expected – them to be as electrifying as they are i mean it looks like a college atmosphere over there they look like they're having a great time in milwaukee out of any city i mean they have they have some great basketball fans more so than the bulls right now i mean they've been passing them in ticket sales for the last two three years at least but um yeah i why I why, why, I why are you taking shots at chicago teams literally a, a minute into the podcast pat i'm not, not taking that, that, shots. Pretty low blows oh the bulls dude we're in a, the bulls on a rebuild I mean, just we could talk about the '90s. Look at Jordan. We could look at to... Jordan Pippen. We the Bulls were the team. Now I will give you this: Wisconsin, phenomenal sports state. Brewers fans are always there. They're always filling up Miller Park or American Family. I'm not going to even call it their new stupid name. It's Miller Park. The, the Wisconsin Badgers fans are always there. Always sell out Camp Randall, Kohl Center, just and Green Bay Packers fans don't even get started. They're so just enthusiastic and devoted fans. And now Bucks fans are finally like coming out of the water and we're finally seeing how passionate these Wisconsin fans are. And I'm not, something more than yeah. baseball and football. I'm not taking a shot at all. I'm just saying the fact that they've been able to get this many fans, this many supporters. I mean, obviously building the new arena was huge for them, but the fact that they've gotten this They were going to move before if they didn't get it built because the Bradley Center, yeah. you've been to the Bradley Center. How was the Bradley Center? I mean- at the time, I was a little bit of a naive fan because I didn't really have been to that many arenas, and I was just going to enjoy a good game. But, um, yeah, I can see why they needed to upgrade looking back. I mean, Pfizer Forum is one of the nicest ones in the league. Obviously, in my opinion, does not compare to the United Center just because of all the history that's been there in the short, like, 25-year span. But yeah, just this Milwaukee Bucks team, you wouldn't have, on paper at the beginning of the season, you wouldn't have thought this was a – NBA champion style team because it's really one to two superstars. It's not it's not like a LeBron Anthony Davis, a Chris Bosch, LeBron, Dwayne Wade. It's not your like stereotypical super team that we've seen, the Curry, Durant, Thompsons. It's really Giannis's team. And it's pretty much just Giannis. I know Middleton's an all-star, Drew Holiday, great player, but I feel like it's just Giannis's team. I would hundred percent agree. Middleton is a lot inconsistent over this series and over the course of the year. Make some big plays when it matters most. I mean, I would – there are times that I'd rather have Middleton in the clutch than Giannis just because, you know, he's a better shooter. But, you know, it's Giannis's team. And if you were to tell me before the season who was going to make the finals, I would have said Nets is the easy favorite. And then the next tier down, I would probably have said Philly, uh, Boston. I would not have put Milwaukee in that mix. Actually, I don't know. I probably I would have put, put Milwaukee in that mix, yeah. ju- mix just because of Giannis. Yanni – or Giannis is putting himself here. If he, when he upset the nets, he like put his name, like he he's for real in the NBA. He belongs up there with the LeBrons, the Katie's, the Curry's. But now yeah. if he wins this, he might hit legend status as only like a, what? 26 year old kid. Mm-hmm. I mean, he he's doing stuff. In the, status. He's doing stuff in the finals that no one's ever done before. I mean, he was the first player since Shaq or I think it was. Yeah. Since Shaq to record back to back 40 point, 15 rebound games in the finals. He was the first to do it. Um, and I think he did it three games, actually. He's just been putting up some insane numbers this year. And going back to the Brooklyn series, I don't want to hear anything about Kyrie was injured or Harden was injured. Karma. He still had to face Kevin Durant, who is arguably a top 10 player of all time. That is still a better team on paper, 100%. And they went into the Brooklyn Nets. They went into the Barclays Center and took them down. And, I mean, KD hits that shot. Yeah, his foot was on the line. That was a lucky shot. They won that game. They outplayed them given the circumstances in front of their home crowd. They deserve to win that game. And going back, I think that if Giannis, if the Bucks win this series, I think you could argue that Giannis is the best player in the game right now. Because I don't want to hear – he already has the regular season 
accolades. He's been a two-time MVP. He's been a defensive player of the year. He's been an all-star game MVP. He's won most improved player. If he wins this series and wins finals MVP, which he should, I don't want to hear anything about, you know, CJ McCollum said, oh, Chris Middleton should get the vote. He's been coming through in the clutch. Yes, he has. But come on, this is Giannis's team. Giannis has made the plays when it matters, both offensively and defensively. And, you know, KD, he's on the downslide. He had an Achilles. Yes, he's still elite, but he's probably going to be on the downslide. Uh, Kawhi Leonard, you know, can he carry a team anymore? I don't think, you know, he did destroy two dynasties, both the Heat in 2014 and the Warriors with the Raptors. But, look, I think that Giannis right now is making his case as the best player in the game just because he's got so many years ahead of him to keep doing what he's doing right now. Yeah, 100%. And just looking at this Bucks team, it's a lot of like, like kind of like, it's a lot of veterans. It's 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 a pretty good. Like, yeah, they brought in a lot of veterans this offseason. It's a pretty old team. PJ Tucker, playoff experience with those Rocket teams of Harden and Chris Paul. Uh, you got Brooke Lopez, been in the playoffs with the Lakers. He was on those net teams with Joe Johnson and my guy in Champagne, Darren Williams. Mm-hmm. Drew Holiday, phenomenal point guard. Jeff Teague was on those Atlanta Hawks teams back in the day with Josh Smith, Joe Johnson again, who I've mentioned. And yeah. did he did he overlap with Trey Young at all? Who? Uh, Jeff Teague. Um, yeah. Wait, hold on. No, because he was with the Timberwolves, I remember, in 2017-18. I think 2017 is the last season in Atlanta. So, you know, Trey Young played a little bit with Jeremy Lin, I'm pretty sure. That's about yeah. it. Not Jeff Teague. But Jeff and Teague, then, veteran point guard. Definitely out of his prime, but good addition for them. He's a great them. backup point guard. And then you got and then, Pat Connaughton, yeah. your Notre Dame guy. Mm-hmm. Yep. He's been playing great in this series. And Made then, some huge plays. Another thing I don't get is why all these terrible Bulls players are now like just balling out in the NBA Finals. Bobby Portis and Cameron Payne will go down as probably some of the worst Bulls players in history of the franchise. Like Cam Payne's jump shot was more broken than like hitting a hammer with hitting a window with a hammer. It was it's, it was more broken than Ben Simmons' jump shot. I'm trying to think of For things real. that are broken. It's more broken than a wheelbarrow with no wheel. That I that mean, that's Cam- that. That's how bad campaign was for the Bulls. And we traded Taj Gibson, one of our franchise guys, for him. And it's just – I don't get how they just flipped a switch like that overnight. Campaign's been spending most of his time in the G League. And you brought up um, – you know, they brought in some really good uh, players to acquire this offseason. Obviously, Bryn Forbes, great catch-and-shoot guy off the bench. He has a role on the team. A lot of what I'm seeing with both these teams in the finals – they don't have guys who try to be something else. You know, they have they have a role on the team. They brought in Drew Holiday because they knew, you know, Bledsoe, yeah, he's a good player, but he's not going to be able to take us to the promised land. They brought him in. He's been an all-star caliber player for most of his career, very underrated. He's been doing a tremendous job for this team. You know, Middleton, he's an all-star caliber guy, can be really efficient. He has the role. Uh Giannis, obviously, he's their superstar. And then, like, Brooke Lopez. This is a very complete team. And they got a good mix of veterans, young players. I like what this team is doing. Now, looking on, let's go down south to the cactus country of Phoenix, Arizona. Look at this team. A lot younger. A lot younger, I would say. Obviously, you got mm-hmm. DeAndre Ayton. What is he, a second or third year player? Uh, yeah, Jay 2018 Crowder. first pick. Wasn't Jay Crowder was on the Miami Heat team last year, wasn't he? He was. Yeah, and so he's been he on is, the Celt- He's been on a lot of teams. He's been on. He has a lot of playoff experience. Uh, he was in the finals last year. Michael Bridges, another young player. DeAndre Ayton. I've just Mikel Bridges. Him. Yeah, Mikel Bridges. DeAndre yeah. Ayton. Uh, he looked like a bust after his first year in the league, but has really picked it up ever since. And obviously, you got your, you got Devin Booker, who's put up what two 40 point games in the playoffs he's been absolutely unbelievable he's been he's been he's been showing that he is a reliable number one scorer chris paul one my my besides derrick rose my favorite player that i got to grow up watching i want him to win a ring but to be honest with you pat you might like me to hear this it doesn't bug me if Giannis wins a ring i'm happy as long the only thing is the bucks are in the bulls division but i'd be happy if Giannis wins a ring i'm honestly happy if anyone wins a ring that's not named LeBron James. I am a Jordan. I'm an MJ writer, MJ homeboy. I am the biggest Michael Jordan fan. I, I, I 
just despise LeBron, even though I respect his craft, respect how good he is. Space Jam 2 is a travesty, and we all know Space Jam is the original. I should have never touched it, but anything that has to do with LeBron James, I want to fail, but I do respect him yeah. so much. Uh, and then Tory Craig, Campaign, we mentioned these guys. The Suns team, I did not expect to make it out of the West. Yeah, what I like about this Suns team, similar to the Bucks, which I mentioned, you know, DeAndre Ayton. He's not a center who likes to go outside and, you know, shoot threes. No, he knows his role. He is a center. So he gets into the paint and does his damage there, which is great. They brought in Chris Paul, veteran. He orchestrates the offense perfectly for this team. And that's why you're seeing Mikel Bridges campaign, getting more minutes and getting more quality shots. So they've been able to contribute more on this team. Devin Booker, you know, we thought three, four years ago, you know, he was dropping 70 points, but he was averaging 25 a game with these empty stats no no he's been doing this on a winning team and in a winning environment and he is probably the best example of a player in the last decade or so who did not get a lot of chances early on in his career you know Draymond said they should trade him and he got fined for that but he's really stepped up to the plate and has been taking great advantage of his first playoff appearance so I'm going to say the opposite of what you said if Chris Paul and the Suns win a ring I have no problem with that because the Bucks have plenty more chances, and Chris Paul needs a ring to validate his career. And if he does, I'd be very happy for him. And then going down the list, you know, Cam Johnson. I mean, this guy, he's still in college getting his degree. I forgot what in, but he's still doing what he's doing in the finals, which is unbelievable. Uh, Jay Crowder, you know, 3 and D guy that they need. A very complete team as well. But I think that you know, the Bucks obviously, if they win tonight, they win it all. But if the Suns can find a way to force a game seven, I don't know. I see it going to Phoenix's way because they're going to rally the Valley and win game seven at home. I just – I can't see the Bucks winning a game seven. I think it has to be tonight. Uh, inver- I like the inverse there. I-, I assume Giannis is your favorite player in the league. He is, yes. So, yeah, you don't mind – or you're the opposite of me. You want Giannis to win, but you don't mind if the Suns win. I, I Chris Paul is my second favorite player. I want the Suns to win. I don't mind if the Bucks win. I mean, before the playoffs, I wasn't really expecting the Bucks to get to the finals. I thought the Nets would. So I was kind of hoping for Chris Paul to finally get a ring. So it wouldn't even be like a consolation prize if Chris Paul won a ring. I'd be just as happy, honestly, because, you know, he deserves a ring. He's one of the best – point guards emphasis on point guard in the league we've ever had oh agree he's up there with john stockton magic johnson gary payton all these other point guards uh yeah. jason kidd um, um those are ones that are ringing just off the top of my head and listen I, this is gonna be a great game six tonight pat let's let's get our predictions in Pat, what, what do you think this final score of a uh, game six between the Bucks and Suns will be at the NBA Finals? I think it's going to be very similar to game four. I think that the Suns are going to be ahead most of the game. I think that, yeah, I'm going to say that the Suns take a halftime lead, but then the Bucks come out swimming in the se- swinging in the second half. Yeah, they come out swimming. They're just getting their speedos on and their swim oh, caps. Yeah. They're just coming out to the, Here we go. the court, getting some goggles on. Everyone They're on the to, going box. with the Let's Horace go. Grant look with the goggles. <laughs> Yeah, but um, yeah, I think that they're going to make a run, start out the second half, then the Suns are going to come bring it back, make it interesting. And then I think that, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to say the Bucks win this one. I'm going to say 112 to 106. All right. All right. Here's my prediction for game six of the NBA finals between the Milwaukee Bucks and Phoenix Suns. Devin Booker is dropping 50 tonight. You heard 50. it here first. Devin Booker's dropping 50. You Would not be here. surprised. He's dropping 50, and the Suns win this game and force a game seven. They win 126 to 124. It's going to be a one possession game down to the wire. It's going to go down as one of the greatest game six, probably since uh, Ray Allen's game, the Ray Allen game, what was that, 2013 versus the Spurs? 2013, yeah. Mm-hmm. That, it's going to go down as like that caliber of game tonight. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be a great game. Both teams are going to – it's going to come down the wire for sure. And I- I'm looking forward to tonight. I don't really care. If it goes either way, I would not have a problem with it because I want to see a game seven. But at the same time, game six, 
would be also nice to win for the Bucks. Yeah, Pat, are you are you uh, going up to Milwaukee at all for the game or? I'm not going to the game. No, I have yet to been to Pfizer the Forum actually, which is kind of disappointing. But um, hope to get up there soon, and uh, I'm sure it'll be a very fun so does, atmosphere. Does this um, does this put down the rumors of you being a bandwagon fan, saying you haven't been to Pfizer Forum yet? You no, because they, they haven't. They were not good when they played at the Bradley Center at all. I mean, no, I mean I went to the games. They didn't even have Giannis. They were like they'd finish last in the Eastern Conference. They'd get top draft picks. You know, I was just going because. Like, was that like the Brandon Jennings, Monte Ellis years? Yeah, Brandon Mike Jennings, Dunleavy OJ Jr. Mayo. Oh, oh, um, I forgot he got banned Jared from Bayless. the league. Yeah, Jared, Jared Bayless. OJ Mayo got banned from the league. He did. Yeah. Oh, uh, and Zaza Pachulia was on the team back then. Zaza. Also, everyone, everyone hated him. Even the home fans, they hated him. Well, just because how bad he was. Also, just how much of a dirty player he is. I mean, obviously, in, against Kawhi, he got his. It was Achilles injury, I think it was, or his quad in the Western Conference Finals. But, yeah, not a lot good was happening back then, but it's a different story now. But I'm not a bandwagon because I've been to the games since they sucked. And, I don't know, they're just, they're just my team, I guess. I mean, when you live close enough, it, I mean, it just hurts me as a Bulls fan. To I'm still a Bulls fan. I'm not going to put any of those – thoughts down hey, hey, at least you're putting the haters haters down about because i mean on that on the, on the tiktok comments they're they're going after you they were going yeah. after you a bit back uh for the bucks for the bucks takes no i'm pretty sure that i remember looking at the comments and you know i gotta pull that one back up i'll do it later but we'll, 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 I, we'll pull it up later yeah. but we're, let, let, let's talk about let's go over to the north side of chicago and just talk about the absolute dumpster fire. Oh my gosh! That is going on at Wrigley. All right. Why? Listen, listen, the Cubs. I'm gonna give this first. There's a lot of unrealistic Cubs fans. There's a lot of delusional people out here. I'm the most realistic Cubs fan out there, and I'm I'm, I'm proud to say that I am. I get nobody I gets agree. more hype. Nobody gets more hype on the Cubs than me, and nobody is harder on the Cubs than me. And I was so hype on the Cubs. April through June, we were in first place, but now, now I'm going to bring down my wrath and come down hard because the Cubs are such a disappointment when you're eight or not, when they're eight, they're nine and a half back right now from the Brewers to a great ball club, like the Brewers who are way more all around. They play like the team. They have a great pitching staff and Corbin Burns, Brandon Woodruff, Josh Hader. Great, great lineup. Yelich, Omar Navarez, Willie Adames, uh, Keston Hira, Colton Wong, Lorenzo. Okay. That, that, that's just like, but when you're down nine and a half to a great ball club like the Brewers at the All-Star break, you are screwed. No ifs, ands, and buts. You are not coming back. No doubt. And I don't know what this team was thinking. I mean, you traded for Jock Peterson in the offseason. Well, they, they signed him. They didn't trade him. They just traded him a couple days ago. Yeah, yeah, they traded him away. But then you signed him. What was he playing with him? He's been like the only bright spot on this team. I mean, if you look at the pitching, it hasn't honestly been that bad. I mean, the only so the bullpen was best in the MLB the bullpen, for, from April to June. No, we shit on the bullpen. The bullpen has been very solid with Tapela and Chaffin and Thompson. And, you know, I'm of, looking of course, at, of course, Kimbrell. But look at like the overall records of all these pitches we got. You know, Hendricks is 12 and four right now. Hendricks no is our else. only good pitcher on the, on the starting rotation. Listen, no one. How do you expect to be good? Jed Hoyer, how do you expect to be good? When you run out five guys in your starting rotation that are legit carbon copies, they're a copy and paste of each other. Same guy. Not a single one of them throws more than 92. Fun fact, Vanderbilt starters have a higher average throwing velocity more than the Cubs. I think the Vanderbilt starting pitchers average like 95 mile per hour fastballs. The Cubs average 91. That's just, how, how does that happen? And like back to my point about Hendricks, no one else on the team, Trevor Williams only played five games. Well, started five games. Trevor Williams he's the has only been one. Terrible. He's the only one who's over five hundred. That says a lot because you got he's been terrible. Yeah, he's been terrible. That's how bad. And then, you know, Kimbrel this year, I must say, has been amazing. He oh, has been doing he's, he's really back good. Where he he's back where he belongs. A point five three ERA. That is ridiculous. And what? I mean, and he has twenty one saves. Uh. I'm pulling up Kimball's stats right now. So yeah, 21, 21 saves has been unbelievable. He's only blown two saves this entire season. Uh, he is 33 innings pitched, 0.53 ERA impressive, 0.65 walk, even more impressive, 58 strikeouts. It's just 
he's back to where he once was at his former glory, and we're going to get a great prospect for him. Yeah. So if you're looking at the Cubs' issues right now, it's not the pitching. Don't blame it on that. We can't hit the ball to save our lives. I mean, oh, you no. look at all I the – you look. I don't want to hear the excuse, oh, it's our lineup. Hey, well, we've changed hitting coaches three times since we won in 2016. I don't get we, – we just have five guys in our lineup who are long ball strikeout guys. You just can't have that. We need a more contact-based lineup, and the Cubs have failed to do that. That's on ownership. But go ahead, what you were saying. Just I, yeah. I'm just so done with this team. I'm so I want to rebuild so bad because this this season has showed we were in first place for a while that this core can't win together anymore. Yeah, they've been mediocre batting at best the last two three years. I mean, we've been we're 19th in OPS it's the, right it's now. It's the same old story every year, Pat. Same and, old story. Yeah. We can't hit with runners in scoring position. Yeah, and Nico Horner right now, only guy who has an above 300 batting average. Next highest is Patrick Wisdom, and he just got signed on the roster halfway through the season. We didn't know what he was. 14, so he's he been 14th showing out. bomb last night. He's been giving good shit. Yeah, 14 homeless. That's unbelievable. Because no one knew who he was. No one. The Cardinals guys... passed on him. He, he's a 28-year-old rookie. Yeah. And then Contreras, Rizzo, Baez, Hap. All of them have been underperforming this year. Oh, of it's course. It's been unbelievable. So the future of this Cubs team, I don't know what they're doing. If they want to upgrade or not, I mean, people could we could kind of conclude that they were going to be sellers at the trade deadline based on how they'd be trending down. 11, 11 game losing streak. That's uncalled oh, for, and it made league gave, baseball. They gave us Cubs fans so much hope when they won on that run April and May, and they were sitting at first Even in the division, June. and then it all had to just slide down. Pat, once now again, we don't know. What I'm going to use the same analogy. What the Cubs did to it, the Cubs did to us what the Illini did to me. They took a knife, they cut into my chest, opened up, took my heart out, and squeezed it out in front of my face. Squeezed all the blood out in my face. They just ripped my heart out. It's just, it's just so, it's just such a sad reality that we won't have meaningful baseball on the north side of Chicago this uh, this August and September because we're we're not going for a pennant race. We're we're selling. Unfortunately, Chris Bryant, he's gone. Kimbrell, has gone. Contreras, maybe gone. Baez, maybe gone. Rizzo, gone. Hendrick, they, they, these guys all could be gone before we know it. Like a snap of the finger, blink of the eye. And it's just it's just so sad to see this core go, but it has to happen. Yeah, and not only are we underachieving, the Sox over here, you know, they're first in the division. They're getting all the attention. All the Chicago fans are going to be paying for them. So we got that going for them. We got another team taking away the crowd noise from us Chicago fans. But, um, I mean, the Sox uh, just are a more complete ball club. They're starting rotation with Rodon, yeah. Lance Lynn, Keuchel, Cease, and Giolito is phenomenal. Great back into the bullpen of Crochet, Kopech, and Liam Hendricks. It's funny that the two best closers in baseball are both in Chicago. And mm-hmm. just this lineup, they're, they're right now running a borderline AAA lineup right now, and they're still, what, 12 games above? They're still 12 games in, like, division lead. How? What's their division lead right now? The they division have lead a, right now. An eight and a half lead, yeah. and they're running like a triple A lineup. Like Eloy Jimenez has been hurt all year. Luis Robert, Nick Madrigal is hurt. The only guys that have been able to stay healthy are Mancata, Abreu, and Anderson. They've just had guys fill up, and the Cubs have not been able to do that. Listen, there's rumors Chris Bryant's going to the South Side. Uh, I, to be honest, I don't really want that to happen because A, Chris Pat, but believe it or not, Chris Bryant is arguably the most successful guy to ever wear a Cubs uniform. I mean, He's won an MVP, one rookie of the year, silver slugger. He's an annual all-star every year for us. He's a, he's, he's, a, he's a Cub guy. He won us a World Series. He fielded the last out. He threw it over to Rizzo. It's just – yeah, and it's a shame the front office is treating him like a – like just like a old, crusty subway footlong because that's what they are. That's just, pretty much – I mean they, – they, they piss off his – they piss off his agent, Scott Boris. They did the whole – they did the whole bullshit at the uh, – with the grievance time, it's just, it's just that we've treated him like absolute garbage. And it's a shame. There's a reason he doesn't want to extend with us, but he's been the most successful guy. And it's just sad, Pat. Talk about lack of loyalty. I mean, a couple seasons ago, we were contemplating, you know, should we trade Bryant for Nolan Arenado? They're at the same player at best. And if anything, Bryant is a lot better. He's given us a lot more. Why would you let go of that when the contracts are pretty much similar and we have the same team pretty much and we can, do more with Bryant because we don't know what we can do with him. So you you can't you can't treat him like that. 
You just can't. The thing you bring up with Ar- with uh, Arenado, or Arenado, I always uh, botched that uh, first pronunciation, that we – Arenado has been a, is a better player than Chris Bryant is. Chris Bryant started off hotter, but Arenado is locked down long-term, and Arenado, it would be the same situation he was with the Rockies if he came to the Cubs. He's mm-hmm. going to, he, he didn't want to be on a seller. Didn't want to be on a losing team. Same reason Trevor Story's going to get traded. That's why he went to the Cardinals. Now, listen, the Cardinals are one game above the Cubs. I'm not going to say that's even better, even though we lost them eight to three last night. Don't even get me started on that. The Cardinals situation isn't much better, but the Cardinals develop talent way better than the Cubs. They develop pitching way better than the Cubs. They have a lot of homegrown player list, homegrown players. The Cubs only homegrown players on the team right now are Baez and Bryant and Hap and Hap sucks. He oh, Contreras maybe Contreras might be homegrown, but only four guys. So the Cardinals have Dylan Carlson, Matt Carpenter, Yadier Molina, Adam Wainwright, Jack Flaherty, Paul DeYoung. Just the list goes on. Tommy Edmond, Lane Thomas, Tyler. This, this their whole lineup's homegrown except for Goldschmidt and Aaron. I don't. That's like kind of have the. That's what you need to have. Like, I think. Pat, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna raise this question out to not only you but to all of our listeners out there. Who do we blame for the Cubs? Like, whose fault is, is this for being in such a terrible situation as the Cubs are in right now? Is it Theo's fault? Jed Jed's fault? The Ricketts? Uh, Joe Madden? Uh, who, whose fault is this? Like, what? Why are we in this situation? Um, I don't know if I can say Joe Madden. Actually, I know, but I like might that's have to that, say you're gonna say well, Joe Madden. Well, I mean, once we got rid of Joe Madden, not, we brought Ross in. It seemed like he was building, you know, he was building a culture. But, um, yeah, I don't really know. I think I'd have to blame it on Theo. But I, I really don't know what's going on in the front office. I don't know what's going on because they just seem like pandemonium right now, to say the least. That I'm whole not gonna, franchise. I'm not going to put all of the fault on Theo. I think Tom has to get some of it. But I think we have to agree. He brought us a World Series, but he – had there were so many bad contracts. Listen, I would do the Jason Hayward contract 10 out of 10 times if you asked me again, because that speech you gave in game seven during the rain delay, we won a world series, even though he's like a career 230 hitter with the Cubs. No, but he makes it up on the field. Brandon Murrow, Brandon Morrow, terrible deal. Tyler Chatwood, the Quintana trade. There's a lot of bad things have gone. I'm trying to think of a more just not re-signing or this was, this was Jed, not, but not re oh, trading away Castellanos. Yes, trade. Oh, we didn't resign him, but uh, uh, well, we didn't yeah, resign him. Not we did. We, we should have because look at him. He's an all-star with the Reds now. Just yeah, destroying us when we ever go to Great American Ballpark. But uh, what was I to say? I was out. Of, well, uh, not not keeping. This is on Jed. Not keeping Schwarber, who's hitting like fifty homers every night, and getting Jock Peterson, who was just a West Coast baby baby faced version of him who was nothing that Schwarber was. And Schwarber was, once again, our guy. He came up in 2015, bur- almost burned the whole city of Chicago down with how hot he was. But, Pat, I- I'm going to bring another name here that does not – it's almost taboo to mention this guy's name in this town anymore. And that's Addison Russell. Addison Russell, he was the best shortstop on our team for th- for 2015-2017. Four- yeah, Baez and then he got even- into all those allegations. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just went all but- downhill. Baez wasn't even our best shortstop at, at Wrigley. And then the whole, not only Russell, remember 2019, Zobers had that same situ- had a situation similar where he had to leave the team. I mean, for as his wife cheated on him, but the whole Zobers and Russell situations, the just the old gooey, just bad, bad, toxic vibes from there leaving the teams. I think that mentally scarred this, this core and they just can't win together. They haven't gelled since. I, I yeah. think of 2020's regular year, we don't go to the playoffs. We had a hot 60 games. I don't think we go to the playoffs last year without the COVID shortened season. I would agree. And just given everything that's going on last uh, three years from the front office to the players itself, I'm not going to blame this on anyone in particular, healing what you said. No, I'm just going to say the whole team chemistry has been just a mess ever since 2016. We've kind of turned into the Philadelphia Eagles here. We just can't. We can't handle success. I think we just got to put it at that. That is a great comparison, Pat. But would you, would you agree with me that this whole Russell Zober situation in 2019 kind of sped up or like kind of like unraveled this uh, downhill uh, trends in our in our just basically as our whole franchise? Just we haven't we didn't make the playoffs. We had a whole September meltdown 2019. 
same we mm-hmm. did in 2018. But do you think this whole Zobrist Russell like was a speedball, like direct uh, butterfly effect to where we are today? It sped it up the process. That's the way it's shaping out to be right now. Yeah. And that's unfortunate, Pat, because you and me, we're big Cubs fans. We, we watched the game. We were in the same room when we watched game seven together. I remember I sprinted around the block. I was so excited. And it's just, yeah, it's seventh grade. Now as we're going into senior year of high school and the Cubs are the, – the, the, our window is officially shut as of today. It, it's, it's gone. Our odds to win the – It's done. Our odds to win the World Series right now are 50 to 1. It's – you know what? We got to see the Billy – the curse of the Billy Goat, the 108-year-long streak. We got to see it snap, and that's all we really could have asked for. But we got two greedy as fans, and uh, – we, we just got to accept the fact we can't win at this court anymore. And I, I, I'm getting, I'm just getting, so I'm just getting like depression. Just, just thinking about looking at Bryant wearing a New York Mets uniform or, or Rizzo in a Red Sox. It's just, these are our guys. It's just sad, but it ha- it's a sad reality and it has to happen. Yeah. I, I want to rebuild just so we can just get this past us, but j- j- I'm going to bring up one more thing, Pat. About this Cubs, then we're gonna talk about another thing. I'm gonna I'm gonna read you the 2016 top prospects for the Cubs, and I and um listen to how many of them are doing well with the Cubs right now, because we had a problem. Theo was trading away all of our guys for Chapman and other guys, but listen, first guy, our top guy in 2016, Glaber Torres. Where is he, Pat? I have no idea. He's 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 the shortstop for the New York Yankees right now. He's he's a good ball player, but he's had a rough year this year. Number two, Ian Happ. What is he doing for the Cubs right now? He's on the Cubs right now. He's batting below the Mendoza line. He's absolutely he he's a he's bench player now. He's been dog water this year. Yeah, he's that's a guy. Three, Eloy Jimenez. I mean, I get it. He's hurt this year, but he's tearing it up on the south side of Chicago right now. He won mm-hmm. a Silver Slugger last year. Four, Albert Almora Jr. He's playing center field for the New York Mets right now. I was not a big fan of this guy, but he's a starting center fielder right now. Yeah. Five, Dylan Cease. He's absolutely striking out everyone he faces with the White Sox right now. It's a shame. He could be in our starting rotation. He throws like 97 and be a great change of pace. Six. He's having a breakout year. I know. Even though the ERA is a little high, he's having a good season. Uh, six, Jamer Candelario. He's the third baseman for the Tigers. You probably don't even know who he is. No, I don't know. Seven. I don't, you're the baseball expert, so yeah. I don't know a lot of these guys. Listen to this guy, Pat. Seven, Mark Zagunis. Hasn't touched a baseball bat since 2019. He's probably at his home in New Jersey, just twiddling his thumbs. I don't know what he's doing. Eight, Carl Edwards Jr. He's on the 60 of the L, I believe, for the Mar- Mariners. He's not doing anything. He's. I see Carl Edwards. I'm fl- friends with Carl Edwards Jr. on PlayStation. I see him on PlayStation all the time. Maybe he should become like a professional gamer instead of play baseball because that's what he likes to spend his time on. Now, nine, Pierce Johnson, pitcher for the San Diego Padres, and 10. Dwayne Underwood, pitcher for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Pat, if you if you recognize, uh, how many of those guys play for the Cubs right now? That I mentioned. right now just Hap. And uh, how's Hap doing? Horrible. That just Absolute. shows how we haven't been able to develop talent since our, we went in 2016. We developed Bryant. We developed Baez. We developed. We Russell was in our system. Rizzo was in our system. We just haven't been able to do it. I don't know. If it starts at the top, or we just need to scrap our minor league minor league guys and just get a whole bunch of new system down there. But any final words before we talk about something a little more upbeating? I mean, at this point, it looks like the best hope is just to cross our fingers and hope we can sign a huge free agent. But the way things looks right now does not look possible right now. Just oh, not no. horrible selling. days, horrible time we're all going through for the Cubs. Yeah, it's a shame that uh, they got all of our hopes up. Let's talk. You know what? We're going to shift over down the state of Illinois, down to Champaign. This is going to get me hyped as hell because, Pat, there's this guy, this big center um, named uh, Kobe Coburn who uh, entered his name in the transfer portal and almost made all of Illinois fans want to kill themselves. But where is he going back to? He's coming back to Champaign. Let's go, House baby. Yes, he is. He is indeed coming back to Champaign. Pat, we are number three on the rankings now. We went from 27 to three with the decision of Kofi Coburn coming back. Listen. Really? And that's with Adam Miller gone. Uh, yeah, that's with Ace Wolf gone, too. Just, Pat, listen. This team listen. could be scary this year. Listen, we're, we're going to be so scary, Pat. 
I know we lost Io, but I've I've got an inside word that Io maybe wasn't the greatest teammate, but he was still a heck of a player. He was all American. But listen mm-hmm. to the lineup we're gonna run out there. We're running out Trent Frazier, who's a fifth year senior coming back. Demonte Williams. Andre Carbello, the second best player on the team, arguably the best, because he was Big Ten six man of the year is gonna be our starting point guard. Him and Frazier Andre Carbello is gonna have a hell of a year. He's gonna break out. He's gonna run our one and two with Trent Frazier. Uh Demonte Williams is coming back. Uh Jacob Grandison. Uh we're having the new guys, Luke Goody and RJ Melendez, are two freshmen coming in who are supposed to be good. Austin Hutchinson is a graduate and also, student. Um, we have two Brandon Podzemiski or yeah, whoever the this Wisconsin, is. Yeah. Wisconsin freshman. And then we have two big transfers coming, Omar Payne from Florida and Alfonso Plummer, which I believe Alfonso Plummer, where was he? Uh, Let me check. I want to say Oklahoma maybe. Uh, I do not remember him playing if he did play at Oklahoma. Oh, I went to Utah. Utah. I, I, I was right direction of the, of the uh, country. But, yeah. Pat. Oh, and Coleman Hawkins. We can't forget about Coleman Hawkins. He follows the podcast. So, shout oh, out. Oh, yeah. Shout out Coleman Hawkins. That man, he's going to be a stud. Uh, he's going to be a stud this year. He's going to be the sixth man of the year for the Big Ten. Calling it right now. Coleman Hawkins. But, Pat, how scary is this team on paper? And how scary are they going to be on the court? Well, I think it all depends on how they play up until – the Big Ten competition. I mean, obviously, Iowa with Luca Garza gone, they're not going to be as much of a threat. Uh, Michigan, I feel like, is always going to be in the mix. This team, it's going to be you know, Michigan versus Illinois in the in the Big Ten. It's going to be. The I race. see them as Big Ten champs, and obviously, Hunter Dickinson from Michigan coming back um, definitely sets the tail of the tape a little bit more for a competition. But um, you know, Illinois, I think they're the pick to win the Big Ten by far. Let's go! Let's go, Pat! Around. Let's go. And Illinois very gonna, and they're going to run the tables. Illinois, you heard, you heard it here first again. Pat, what day is it? Today? It is July 20th, 2021. I don't know when March Madness is next year, but or the national championship. I want to say it's, pro- it's first week of April. April, April yeah. probably 3rd, 2022. Illinois will cut down the nets at where, where is it next year? It is at Mercedes Benz Superdome. The Mar- at the Superdome down in, down in New Orleans. Kofi Coburn and the boys down from Champaign will be cutting down the nets as national champions. You heard it here first, like nine months before, ten, nine, eight months before it's going to happen. Illinois will bring down the nets. Brad Underwood will be named coach of the year. The Wooden Award will go to Andre Carbello, not Kofi Co- Andre Carbello. Andre Carbello. And, dude, I'm so high on this Illini team. I'm, I'm – Pat, we're winning it all. I hate, hate to break it to you as a, a non-Illinois fan. And you know what? Screw you for cheering for Loyola that one live stream. We I did. was playing games. Screw you. And I got you to think that I was cheering for Illinois. That was really fun. Uh, interesting fact, I, I was uh, on my plane ride home. So for those of you who aren't aware of uh, why we haven't done a show since uh, June 30th, as uh, I was down in Atlanta and all over the country playing baseball. Uh, I played, so I pitched at Illinois State, uh, pitched a, all across the country, and uh, on my flight home from uh, Atlanta to O'Hare, do you want to know who I sat next to, Pat? Who? Patrick Wallace, the assistant coach of the Loyola Ramblers basketball team. Really? I, I was just talking his ear off about how they how they beat Illinois that game and said how they, like, shut down Io to Sumu, and uh, he said Io can't go to his left. And I'm like, how does Loyola figure that out? But the 13 other Big Ten teams couldn't. Is it just a game plan thing? Like, did, is that was no that clue. one of the reasons the downfall of the Big Ten in the March Madness? But I don't know. They could figure it out, but how couldn't Iowa figure it out? How couldn't Michigan figure it out? Michigan didn't play him, but uh, how didn't Michigan State figure him out? How did all this happen? Michigan State injured him, but how did Minnesota not figure him out? Uh, I Indiana, I don't get it, Pat. I don't know. And Andre Cabrillo, I think, is a little bit more ambidextrous. He can go either way, make a play. So. That could be the silver lining. You know, Io on paper, you know, he's definitely a better player. Don't get me wrong. Oh, he's, he's gonna a, be in he's the a draft. phenomenal player. All he's going to get drafted. First yeah. round. First round, no doubt. But, um, you know, I think a lot of people think this Illinois team could take a drop this year. But you brought up Brad Underwood. I think he's going to be – he is the liability of this team if there is one. Because I thought game planning, game management. situationally, game management. game management, he was a little subpar last year in big-time games. 
you know, obviously when Iowa went down and they went on the road and whooped Michigan, you know, that was a different story. But there's some times last year where I questioned, you know, the game plan from Underwood. This is what we're doing this year. We're going to – it's going to be full fans at the State Farm Center, the House of Pain, what us Illinois fans call it. We're going to go down to Champaign. We're going to do like a vlog-style video at the arena – Zoomer Sports posted on our YouTube. It's going to be electric pack. Heck yeah. We're, we're going to a game in Champaign we're going. this year. Thanksgiving break, we got to go. We, we're, we're going. Yeah. Thanksgiving Done. break, they're, they're actually not in Champaign. Oh, they have not. to do winter break. They're, they're in Kansas City. So I might go to, okay. I might go to that because they're in the college basketball uh, classic, the Hall of Fame classic at the, the T Mobile Center now in Kansas City. Do we go to the rivalry game with Missouri at the. No, that's probably would, too far away. No, St. Louis. Away. It's. It's, it's a like five a six-hour hour drive. It's a five and a half hour drive, but the problem is, those tickets are very expensive. Yeah, those are like extremely expensive seats for the rivalry game between Missouri and Illinois. But that was a great idea. Pat, you know what? This this winter, we're go we're gonna go to DePaul games. We're gonna go to Loyola games. We're we gonna gotta go, hit a lot of places. We're gonna go to Northwestern. Uh, who else? UIC. We gotta hit all these teams. Wisconsin. We gotta we gotta hit this. And the good thing is that I don't have to rely on my dad for giving us rides there anymore. Yeah, we, we can we, just we have our license wherever we want. Yeah. And he was right. up. You know what? Um, what, Pat? I was going to say, should we transition over to oh, the yes, other gonna... Big Ten transfer? Marcus yeah, Carr. Marcus Carr going to Texas. I mean, this Texas team. It's going to be good. I mean, Baylor's losing team. a lot, but don't be expecting them to be back. Kansas lost a lot. You know, Jalen Wilson, Ochai Abaji, Marcus Garrett all went to the draft. How, how will your Jayhawks be this year, Pat? I mean, they got uh, the Drake transfer, Joseph Yesifu. Um, that is true. He, that's he's pretty much to Illinois. Yeah. But, I mean, they got Christian Brown. He's going to be probably one of the lead guys. So, they could take a step back this year. I think Texas could be one of the best teams in the Big 12. I mean, they got Jericho Sims, Andrew Jones coming back. He's been there for a billion years. Uh, and then they got Marcus Carr. I mean, they brought in Chris Beard from Texas Tech as the head coach when Shaka Smart went to Marquette. I mean, this Big 12 right now I think is really open. I think that they could take the lead as the top team in that conference. And uh, you really got uh, – COVID really screwed over Jayhawks fans and Jayhawks players in 2020. Because with Udoka and Devin Dotson – they were going to win in 2020. Everyone knew this. I think mm-hmm. in our, if you listen to our very first episode. Which I had is them only, winning it all. Which is only on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Pat and I did a mock. It was like the fourth. It was like one of the big COVID days. Everyone was in quarantine and we were locked down. They just canceled March Madness. We did a mock March Madness and we had Kansas winning it all on a consensus. Yeah, should, we had a final four, I think, was uh, I think, Kansas, Illinois, Dayton and Seton Hall. I think, to be honest with you, I think the Illinois pick was just uh, my bias. That was just, yeah, that was just bias. <laughs> that was just my bias. But Let's look, looking at bad, how bad we did in the actual tournament this year, that might have been just my bias. But, all right, let's talk some NFL now. Unfortunately for us Bears fans, Aaron Rodgers will be returning to the Green Bay Packers. It's a shame, really, because I was hoping they would have to run out their Blake Bortles <laughs> And Jordan Love, and we would just mopped over this division with uh, and Tim Boyle, the grocery store clerk. <laughs> oh yeah, dude, oh, that's never... what he reminds me of. That's the most like grocery store name ever, Tim. It Boyle. is. That, that... Good thing you it's mentioned like a that. Whole Foods or something. Whole Foods. <laughs> just works at the Pete's Fresh Market. Uh, <laughs> he's the free samples guy. He's no, he's just, just like... he's the deli meat guy. <laughs> order, order for number nineteen. We got some salami. <laughs> Or or he's the cart. He he goes and collects all the carts and wears like the the vest. Oh my gosh! Tim Boyle needs to get a job at like Jewel Osco. For real, uh, but oh, it, it would fit him. Yeah, going back to this Aaron Rodgers, you know he's staying with Green Bay. I'm seeing an ongoing pattern with uh, Green Bay. It's the Aaron Rodgers cycle. Um, they treat him like he's Ryan Fitzpatrick. They treat him like he's a scrub. You know they have a lot of off-season banter about, you know, is he going to stay? Is he going to go? He comes out swinging. He looks like an MVP candidate, leads them to a great record, but then gets upset in the NFC Championship game. Yep, That's the Green time. Bay cycle. Every it's going to happen year. this year again. And we're going to hear it from Green Bay fans. Oh, we lost in the NFC Championship game. 
You poor thing. All the Bears can't make the playoffs. We can't make it past the first round. We made the playoffs uh, with Trubisky. Yeah, that's true. Twice. <laughs> All right. They, and, they, they got yeah. lucky this year with the 17 format because they were 8-8. Eight and eight. Mm-hmm. Like that, you could argue that's the worst wild card team of all time to make the playoffs. Just, I think I think Khalil Mack, the Khalil Mack trade, looking back at it now, might have hurt us more than it helped us. I, I mean, mean, the obviously Raiders. We, obviously, we were great in twelve and four. We were twelve and four in that twenty eighteen season, but we lost our draft picks. I think we could be in a totally different situation. Maybe. No, I I think that from that trade, the Raiders got Josh Jacobs, and I think. They got a good lineman in the draft too. Maybe it was was it Cleveland Farrell? No, because they were in the same draft class, so it could have been that. It was a different pick. I hate they got someone else good though. If 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 Cody Parkey just makes that kick, this this whole thing is just different. You I know, think the narrative of Trubisky would be he's a franchise quarterback if he made that kick because he just, led them down the field to win the game. Pat. Um, uh, you saw the TikTok of me making the field goal. I think if uh, they ran, they ran me out there for that kick. Should uh, sign you. Yeah, the the bull, the Bears would have gone and played the Rams. Well, they would have played the Rams if they won, right? Yeah, they would have. They would have gone and played the Rams. LA. They would have beaten the Rams, and then who who they would have faced uh, the Saints, Saints in the NFC Championship game. I think we might have lost that though. I think that would have been a game where we had the lead for some time, but then Drew would pull it out of the. The end. fact that Drew Brees has only been a one Super Bowl is just. It, just, it it taints his legacy, and he's never won MVP. It taints his. You can't. You can't. Here's my top five quarterbacks of all time. One, Tom Brady, seven rings more than any other championship. Just what's known doesn't need to be told. Mm-hmm. Uh, number two, it's either Joe Montana or Peyton Manning, in my opinion. Who mm-hmm. would you go with? I would go. Well, should I give my top five right now? All right, I'll give my or top just, five. For, yeah, you uh, give you the top five, then I'll give mine. Brady, Montana, Manning, Rogers, Breeze. For me, it's Tom Brady, it's Joe Montana, it's Peyton Manning, same top John three. Elway, and Dan Marino. All right, so we, so you're gonna put Marino over Rogers and Breeze, who both have Super Bowls. Um, Marino yeah, number one Marino, Super Bowl. Well. Marino won an MVP, and he did have some. He been to a Super Bowl, so so, so he on. he didn't win the big game though. Yeah, Jim Kelly know. went to four Super Bowls. Does that make him in the top five quarterback? Yeah, he's won MVP once, offensive play. I don't know. It it's it's apples to oranges. You really can't compare it. Well, why like, why couldn't I'm, you? Like Drew Brees is a arguably has the greatest stats of any quarterback in the history. I don't know. I just. I don't really know how to explain. He broke, like, Peyton, he broke all of Peyton's records. Drew Brees. I'm not about, above him. Drew Brees is a close six for me. I don't think he's quite top five. He is, I he's think in the top five. You can't have a top five quarterback that hasn't won a Super Bowl. I get, I'll give you Elway. Elway's six on my list. El, I think Elway, Rodgers, and Brees could be interchangeable. But putting Marino over Brees, that's just Bree, – what Brees leads like the passing yards. Drew Brees like has all the records. And you're going to mm-hmm. put Dan Marino above him just because you won an MVP? A lot of that could just that, that, be that, – that, that, That's stupid to me. That's stupid to me. He did throw – Elway through over 5,000 yards in a season once. He's won the passing title five times, the passing touchdowns title three times. He's been an MVP, comeback player of the year, offensive player of the year. He's been to some Super Bowls. How many I don't goals? know. I'm just kidding. I don't think you can be – I mean, Drew Brees – yeah, it's a hot take that he's not top five. I'll give you that. But that is a I huge like- hot. He's number one in passing yards for a career. Brady's gonna break that, I think, though. I feel like you gotta have at least an MVP. I mean, was there was there a season he got snubbed of the award? I, I can't remember like a huge season Ooh, he had where Brett, he should have won it. Favre make the top five. That, that I think he's seven for me behind Elway. Yeah, I'd say he's around that range. You could argue Brett Favre for top five, but just I think mm-hmm. Rodgers and Breeze have cemented themselves. Where's Rodgers on your list? I want to hear that. Rodgers, I'd say, is – is it too soon to put Mahomes on the list? Yeah, is he's what? I, Pat, you know me. Then I'd I'm probably a... have Rodgers at eight. Eight. Eight for Aaron Rodgers. Are you kidding me? Eight. Eight. Pat, you've seen what he's done to the Bears. This man – is a golden child. Aaron Rodgers, he's, I mean, he, he can win games, except he can't win the big game. I'll give you that one, but he's just such a good quarterback. He's Aaron Rodgers, I'll give you that rip the heart out. Has literally, he nailed, he like, 
Pat, I, I just don't I don't agree with that take. Okay. Uh, I just feel like in this, you know, in this era of the NFL, what Aaron Rodgers can do, not only like as a quarterback, he's done it with but, like, no athletically. Weapons. Yeah, exactly. He, he you're makes proving the my weapons. point. You're proving how, my point. How, how he's never played with a first round pick. Because you're saying that he's had the so, worst. That makes nothing. him better. That would make him better. Oh, I thought you were saying that. I thought because you complained that he was eight. I thought you were saying that, like, how do you have him that high? You should not be favoring him. This oh, I no, miss, no, miss no, no, no. Said. I have Rodgers at four on my list. Oh, you have him at four? Yeah. Okay, so, okay. I have Brady, Montana, Manning, Elway, Marino, Breeze, Favre, and Rodgers. And Rodgers and Favre both have one ring. So Rodgers is better. Yeah. My opinion. I don't know. Just yeah, it's it's hard to compare eras. I don't know. I, mean, I could fair, they, I could they, they, play, they played at the same time technically. On any given day, my list could be different. Today I'm just feeling, you know, it could be a little bit of recency bias, not gonna lie, but I'm gonna I'm putting him at eight for now because he doesn't have quite the the disrespect to Aaron Rodgers from you, Pat. I, Pat, we we cheer for the Bears. And all right, listen, yeah. Mahomes, we all know. I I have Kansas. I have people, uh, family from Kansas City. I cheer for the Royals. I cheer for the Chiefs. I cheer for the Bears. I cheer for the Cubs. I don't want to hear any of these bandwagon talk. I have, but anyway, I cheer for both Kansas City teams. What do you want me to do? Uh, sue me. Uh, but listen, Mahomes is n- nowhere near the top ten. But he's a phenomenal quarterback. If you go mm-hmm. top three seasons, he might be number one. But listen, Rodgers, just we've seen what he's done all the time. Whenever you go against Aaron Rodgers, you don't think your team's going to win ever, no matter who, unless you have Tom Brady. You just think uh, defense is probably Aaron Rodgers' most hated quarterback to play against because he reads defenses so well. He uses the free play better than anyone I've ever seen play the position of quarterback. He always goes to deep ball. He's got phenomenal range. Do you, how many how many uh, Hail Mary tosses do you remember Aaron Rodgers doing? There, there's a ton. He's such a uh, – the one against the Cardinals in the playoffs, the one against the Lions, Richard Rodgers on Thursday Night Football. Uh, there's just a ton you remember. Uh, wasn't there the one um, – the replacement refs when they uh, – one set interception, one set touchdown? It's just mm-hmm. a lot of – I think – I think you're uh, underestimating Aaron Rodgers. Here's where I think Aaron has a slight disadvantage. Everything that you say he can do, and he can do, everything that his opponents fear, that's all done mostly in the regular season. He hasn't won that many big games. I mean, he's been in, what, five, six NFC Championship games? He's one in four, one in five. So big games, you know, you could argue, I mean, recently his weapons, I think, have been pretty good. And those, he may... He made like two or three NFC Championship games in that time. A lot of that, you could argue, is just him not being able to come up when it matters most. And that's where I think some other guys, you know, there's some exceptions. Maybe Marino, maybe Breeze to an extent, although I don't know how many championship games he got to at the top of my head. That's where I think a line gets drawn between who are the top five and who is six through ten. That's what I'm going to leave it at. All right. I think we should transition into one of our fan favorite uh, segments. You know, all the TikTok comments. Oh, you got to do another top five. Got to do another top. All right. So listen, Pat, do you want to do you want to release what our top five will be today? Yes. Today, given that, you know, it's a big day, game six of the finals, we decided for this time just to keep it sports related. We'll, we promise in the future we'll stretch it out a little bit more, be a little more adventurous. But today we're going to do Top five NBA Finals moments in NBA history. I'm a, I'm a big fan of this one. Pat had first pick in our broadcaster uh, rankings, so I have the first one here. Mm-hmm. And listen, NBA Finals is crazy some of the best moments, but if you don't take this pick one one, you're 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 just it's just it's a steal for the other guy, and it just shows you don't know basketball. But this is a consensus first pick for anyone, and it's Jordan's last shot against the Jazz in '98. Jordan, a drive. Where he, we, where he crosses up, uh, Brian Ross, or was it Byron Russell? Shoots mm-hmm. in Utah, seals the series, seals that six ring, second three peat, retires, and it's just it, it really, it's the most that photo of him 
just like with a crown in the backwards and black and white and he's in red and the ball. It's one, it's one of the most iconic photos in sports. I don't think anyone's going to get, I think everyone agrees with this decision. I'm taking Jordan's last shot. So that's your first pick. Yeah. Okay. My first pick. This is well, a well, no what are your, what are your thoughts on that pick? Uh, I think that's a good pick. You know, obviously the last dance, the last season, way, great way to go out and finish his career as a bull. But, you know, the shot over Byron Russell, I mean, and that was the second year in a row that they actually beat the, beat the Jazz. Jazz in the finals. Yeah, so huge nail in the coffin for that dynasty to sort of take a good ending on and for the Jazz to kind of disintegrate. It's the most iconic the moment in NBA history, you could argue. One of the how most, could, yes. How could that not be taken 1-1? One, one. But that, that's why I took it, and Pat, you're up. Yes, and my first pick – I'm not going based on any particular order, but this is probably the best moment that I'm going to choose. It's going to be the year prior, Michael Jordan playing in his flu game. At 77, after the whistle, Jordan on the bench looking absolutely ill, and I'm not talking ill as in good. Minutes later, though, Jordan tells Russell, hey, yo, it's Michael, not Michelle. He had 15 in the fourth. Jeff- and this was oh. 1997, game six, no, game five on the road, series tied 2-2. Jordan had been in his room all day the night before. He ordered a pizza with five guys delivering it, and he ate the pizza in his room. 2 a.m., he's puking left and right. No one knows if he's going to be able to even function the rest of the day. But he decides that he doesn't go out for team practice. He doesn't go out for team warm-ups. He's in the locker room puking his guts out, and then he comes onto the floor and just panting up and down the court, just looking extremely nauseous, drops 38 in the final game-winning shot and comes back from a 12-point deficit or so as well. On the road, takes a 3-2 lead over the Utah Jazz and sends the series back to Chicago. Uh, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, it's just, if there's a legacy-defining moment, this is it. Over the last shot? Well, I feel like just the mentality he had to overcome to play in this game and play the way he, that he did, I mean – there's not that many people that would play like this in a playoff game, let alone a regular season game. It's just, you don't see that in professional sports. All right. That was a great, that that was a great pick. Just uh, that was on my board. Uh, Jordan's flu game. I'm just going to say for the graphic, both having Jordan at number one, is going to look great for the vote Mm -hmm. for the poll. I, I, I can't disagree. I had that on my board, but for my second pick, Pat, I already took the most iconic moment of the GOAT, and now our generation's GOAT. I'm taking his most iconic moment. I'm taking LeBron's chase down block in Game 7 of the 2016 pick. World Series. Just Andre Iguodala. World at Series. A, I, did I say World Series? Yeah, you did. Oh, my bad. I'm thinking Cubs That's 2016. Fine. No, no. Game 7 of the 2016 NBA Finals. I'm just so – I'm so used to saying Game 7 of the 2016 no, World I Series. No, I can see how you – because we were that's just fine. talking about it. No, oh, yeah. that's that was good. All right, yeah. But for my second pick, I'm taking the our generation's goat most iconic moment, the Jordan or God, I I am messing up. I just said Jordan. Our gener second pick, our generation's goat, LeBron James is chased down block on Andre Iguodala. He's a layup to tie the game. He comes out of nowhere. Just his most iconic moment, just slapping the ball off the backboard. Rebound taken by Iguodala. Iguodala to Curry back to Iguodala. I'm taking LeBron's chase down block. And I will say there's another moment uh, in that minute that might also get taken in this draft. I would not be shocked. And I'm not going to take that moment right now, but I am going to take another uh, moment that did involve LeBron. 2013 NBA Finals, Spurs versus Heat, Game 6. Spurs are up 3-2. It's LeBron. No, no, no. Chris Bosh. No, no, no. It's LeBron. He takes the three, but he misses. Rebound goes to Bosh. And he back kicks it to- back out to Ray Allen for three. Bang! And Tied the game in. is tied at 93, I believe it was. Something like that. James catches, puts up the three. Won't go. Rebound, Bosch. Back out to Allen. His three-pointer. Bang! Tie game with five seconds remaining. But the game is tied. We go to overtime. The Heat win that game. Just one of the most iconic shots. I mean, corner three swish. Ray Allen at the time probably the best three-point shooter in NBA history. I mean, at least one of the best. So, you know, huge uh, 
shot for, to sort of continue that dynasty. And um, that saved the series right there. And it's just such an iconic shot. How can you not have that in the top five? I feel like it has to be. Oh, of course. That was going to be my next pick if you didn't take it. But looking looking at it, we it's just phenomenal boards. And uh, Pat, you have the next one. Okay, so for my next pick, I'm going to go to – I'm going to go a little further back. Um, I'm going to go back to 1980 Magic Johnson in the 20 and no, in the 1980 NBA finals against the Philadelphia 76ers. I mean, this guy, he was the face of the league point guard of the league could just could do everything. And in one game, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was out with an ankle injury. So he has to sub in and play center and he drops 42 and 15 at the position. I mean, if he, this is one of the games where you talk about versatile guys, you know, he can play point guard, he can play center. You could argue had he not gotten the AIDS virus and had to cut his career short, he could have chased down MJ as the GOAT. I mean, obviously, he played before him, so he couldn't chase anything at that point. But at the time, given his career and if he kept playing, you could make the argument that he is the greatest of all time at the trajectory he was going. And obviously, the Lakers ended up winning that series just a really impressive performance out of the blue, I think, from Magic. Yeah, just so Magic's 40-point game in 1980 is what you want? Yeah, that's my next pick. Just for the graphic, all right. Mm-hmm. My next one, number three, I'm I'm taking – this is an infamous one. I'm taking Allen Iverson stepping over Ty Lu in the 2001 Ooh. finals, game one. He knocks the three, Tyler's down, just steps over them. Another iconic moment, the most iconic moment, moment in AI's career. One of the top five point guards in the history of the league. I'm taking, I'm taking the step over. It's a solid pick. And obviously, after that, the Sixers got swept by the Lakers in the finals. But he did get one game, which was... I'm just saying, just that moment MVP is that so year. iconic. You, 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 just, you can't not take it. Mm-hmm. Okay, my next pick... I'm going to, as you alluded to earlier, uh, that game seven in 2016, I'm going to Kyrie Irving's step back three over Curry to give the Cavs the lead and ultimately win them the title. Um, Game going back and forth. The game had been tied for a while. It was like no one had scored for like three, four minutes. Game was tied at 89. And then Kyrie with the shot clock running down just does a two dribble crossover, step back three over Curry. And, you know, I remember Mike Breen with the call, Kyrie Irving from downtown. And I actually wasn't watching that game. I was in an overnight camp. But, um, you know, it's just a very iconic shot given the situation, given everything for the city of Cleveland. Uh, that kind of put the energy out of the arena because obviously it was at Oracle. And from that point on, the Cavs won the championship and LeBron finally made his promise and they got the ring. Pat, that that's a great pick. I was actually watching that game in Kansas city at my cousin's house. And uh, I actually wanted the Cavs to win. I, 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 I don't know why at that point LeBron was not as, he only had one, two. I wanted him to win one in Cleveland. It was a great story. Cleveland. This is, this for, is you. for you. I remember we blew <sighs> that after the Indians blew their three, one lead, but they blew the three, one lead. Just a phenomenal pick. I don't know anyone that's going to disagree with that. I, I I alluded to it further. Oh, uh, wait before. a second. Were you supposed to get two picks? No, it's I fine. Think it's you fine. Were. Okay. It's fine. Then you get two picks this Yeah, time. I get two picks now. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. All right. So what I'm doing. Oof. Here, here. Dude, I don't know what I want to do. See, we are a Chicago-based podcast, but I don't know if I want to get too many on Jordan. But, yeah. you know. Uh, I might I might have to take his uh what I might have to take his uh, 55 point performance against the Suns. I'm taking it. I'm taking his 55 okay. point Go performance ahead. against the Suns. I mean, listen, you got Don Marley, Charles Barkley, great Suns team and he put up 55. I I'm, I'm taking it. I'm taking Jordan's 55 point game. And mm-hmm. then this one, my next one, I'm just typing it down for the graphic. Uh 
This one is more of a funny moment, but it created another iconic photo. It created a meme, and it's very recently. I'm taking J.R. Smith doesn't know the score. That's a very really good. That's a good pick because it's I'm not taking all JR positive Smith doesn't, based moments. Because like I, I see Pat, all all of yours, Pat, are just positive moments. Are these guys like? And I, yeah. I I'm putting moments that like ruined a guy's careers, like Ty Lue and J.R. Smith. I mean. I'm taking J.R. Smith doesn't know the time. That was just one of the funniest things of all time, one of the funniest photos. Uh, but you have the final pick. Okay. Um, or doesn't know the score. Yeah, it doesn't know the score. Okay. Um, I don't know. It's hard to remember. I feel like there are a lot of good uh, NBA moments, but not in a lot of great finals moments. I know. Like, like, funny. Like, it's kind of ironic. I feel like it's think more that playoffs, they call like, them in the finals. Like – you have Kawhi's three versus the Suns. Like, March Madness moments. We could go all day. Oh, dude, March Madness moments. You could. We could, we could just do – um, You know what? We're just going to let everyone know. When it comes to March Madness season, we're going to do a top five upsets uh, list. Just just so we everyone will. knows. That one would be really interesting. There's a, there's a lot of variety with that one. But um, my final pick – Oh, my gosh. Um, I'm going to go with, this was 20, no, 1984. This is the Lakers and the Celtics when, uh, they were down, the Lakers were down to, uh, 113 to 111. And Gerald Henderson, uh, intercepts James Worthy's pass and makes the game tying layup to seal the game against and bring it to overtime they eventually won that game huge turning point but it was only game two but that's why it's at number five just i kind of feel bad ending on that one but there aren't a lot of great finals moments hat i'm ending on a one where a guy didn't know the score i think you're good okay <laughs> but uh i will say uh i i in the in our NBA or in our college basketball broadcasters or announcers uh, uh, list, top five ranking on the poll, I won by one vote, Pat. One vote. How many votes total were there? I think we had like 60, 60 oh. 62. We had, a good, we had a good amount of votes. That was a lot of votes. That's a sign that we had good teams if it was only one vote. This Yeah, spin. it was a sign. Like, yeah. You, I, a lot of people told me uh, you taking Greg Gumbel at five was an absolute steal, and it was. Yeah, that probably brought it a little closer. Yeah, I, I thought I was going to be able to. And then shout out Stephen Bardo and Jay Billis for liking that post on our Instagram. Oh, thank you so much to those two. I thought Stephen Bardo was going to get on the show. Is that ever going to happen? It's the, yeah, Stephen Bardo. I'm waiting for um, a college basketball season to have him on. Okay, yeah. Because I feel like we'd get more viewership to have him on. Like I want like, him to do it. We could do like a Big Ten preview episode with him. But once the season gets going, I think that he'd be a little more busy. So maybe we could do it like – I a feel week like, or like two August. before the season. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. October. Like, yeah, October. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe September or I like October. Maybe. Yeah. I just think it'd be yeah, and then we can get some other guests. Uh I, I'm we you know what? Zoomer Sports is just trending up as we as we speak right now. We're just going yeah. up. We we hit ten thousand followers on TikTok uh, last really? month. Yeah, we're we're Pat, we're just despite the lack up. of podcasts, we've been doing pretty well. Yeah, just you know what we're I feel like until we're gonna roll this out and I assume I assume we're gonna do something once school starts, we're gonna do something like we had on uh during last fall. We're gonna do just the Saturday college football episode. Sounds that's good. What, Sounds that's like what a I plan. think we're gonna do. That's, that's just what we're gonna go back to. This is just where our heads are for uh the upcoming months of Zoomer Sports. So for all our listeners and viewers out there, uh Thank you for watching. I think we're going to end the show here. Pat, do we have any uh, closing words, uh, final discussion? We look forward to the upcoming shows we have in the future. We wish nothing but the best for our Chicago Cubs, our Chicago Bears, and all the other franchise, Illinois basketball. Whoever you like. Whoever, Whoever you, you like. For, we, we wish the best. Unless you're team. a St. Louis Cardinals fans, we want your team to win. Yeah. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe and do so, and um, make sure you follow the Instagram the podcast. Yeah, follow yeah. the Instagram. The, we'll we'll Twitter, post the poll. Uh, TikTok. once we get this, once we get this episode on YouTube, yeah, follow the TikTok. We'll post the poll on YouTube. 
or not on YouTube. We'll post a poll on Instagram. So make sure you follow us there. Follow us on Twitter. The links to all that will be in the bio of our you or in the bio of this YouTube video, the description. So yeah, thank you. And Pat, we might need to get a, some some merch going again. Yeah, I could do another order for the shirts if we need to. Let yeah. us know if you want a shirt. Yeah, we're, we're down to do it, but it's been a great hour and 15 minutes ta- talking with you, Pat. So I think we're going to close it there. We'll see y'all later. Cue the music. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Cue my old uh, – <laughs>